ස්තුති ගරු රෞෆ් අප්කී මන්ත්‍රීතුමා ඔබට විනාඩි 8ක කාලයක් තියෙනවා බිස්මිල්ලාහ් රහ්මන් රහීම් ඔන්බල් ප්‍රසයිඩින් මෙම්බර් දි opportunity to present a policy statement after proroguing parliament was the uh, should have been used by the president to address the uh, anxieties and uh, doubts that are in the minds of the people to get rid of them at least to uh, allay their fears but what finally happened was that he tried to paint a rosy picture it was an abysmal failure his statement did not offer any explanation as to whether we uh, would be coming out of the miserable position the country is situated in now with all this misery and hardship today the questions that are asked in every household is whether there is going to be power cuts in the coming days whether there will be extended gas shortages that we are currently facing will there be a medicine shortage will there be scarcity of food then there is all this is question of the economy grinding to a halt in this country with all these problems the country is already experiencing these shortages what is in store in the near term is nothing but catastrophic and based on the direction we are moving in we would soon be a bankrupt nation they no doubt and every economic activity will come to a grinding halt and the general public will be in the streets uh, madam presiding member i foresee a big demand for wheelbarrows not for anything else we would need wheelbarrows to move the depreciated sri lankan rupees around that is what is going to happen in the future if we don't take the advice from the right economists who are talking about the plight in which we are today now based on the actions of the government and the economic decision makers it is blatantly evident the decision makers instead of looking for a solution to pull the country out of the abyss is passionately pursuing the devil to further entrench the country in the abyss and cause immense misery and hardship to the people of this country on the presiding member every decision of this government since it got elected to power has been reactive and agenda based where decisions were taken in isolation without holistic assessment with proper scientific uh, advice the ramifications of such decisions would have on the economy as a whole is all but terrible and that is what i am going to lay out here here are some of the ramifications of the reactive agenda based decisions power shortage is linked to fuel shortage which is once again linked to shortage of foreign exchange shortage of medicines is linked again to foreign exchange crisis food shortage is linked to the ban on fertilizer against which so many who knew the subject was advised in the government but they were turning a deaf ear further it was exacerbated by the dearth of foreign exchange once again then again we see the inflation reaching double digits that's linked to the uh, tax cuts that the government uh, gave to their preferred businessmen money printing and artificially fixed exchange rate also caused inflation then gas shortage linked to again foreign exchange uh, crisis then due to misguided regulatory actions now there are a long list of these things many reversals of these government decisions brought before this house endorses my contention that the decision making at government level have been very haphazard to say the least mr presiding member the pandemic has become the bogeyman for the government for every ill faced by this nation the pandemic did create a situation of course like it did for all our neighbors in the sark region sri lanka was not the only country affected by the pandemic in his excellency the president's own words he did say we did better than most nations but all our sark neighbors who did worse than us on the pandemic front have weathered the pandemic storm and have come out shining well and they have all their reserves are have increased but whereas our reserves are plunging to the bottom 
And this is what is happening. The secret of our SAC neighbor's success was all of them had cohesive, structured plans guided by proper leadership to weather the pandemic storm, while Sri Lanka was running behind the devil with no plan and no direction. Due to the time constraint, I could focus only on limited economic situation uh, issues in the country. Now, we are in the dire strait purely because of inaction and misguided actions of decision makers. Honorable Speaker, the learned Ghana of the Central Bank has to date failed to digest the basic economic principle, that being the market is smarter than everybody else. What this means in pure layman's terms is one cannot fight and or control the marketplace. If you do, market forces will hit you back hard where it hurts you most with venom. Honorable Presiding Member, two important tools that align market forces is the exchange rate and the domestic interest rate. The result of this misguided action in the context of foreign exchange market is this. One is remittances, which was $700 million per month in May, has dropped to US Honorable dollars member, 300 million per month today. Exporters are holding back on foreign exchange and have borrowed rupees against them, creating a shortage of foreign exchange in the banking system. That again, we must understand the, because of the misguided policies of the uh, central bank. Because they failed to keep the rupee interest rate uh, above at least uh, 4 to 5 percent, while the banking system was paying 5 percent for U.S. dollars, also with the central bank paying an additional 2 percent, it resulted in exporters retaining their foreign exchange borrowing, uh, foreign exchange and borrowing rupees to fund their operations, which resulted in the short supply of foreign exchange. This demand for foreign exchange pushed, pushed the U.S. dollar official rate differential to almost 10 percent in May, June. Now it is currently about 30 percent. The rapid increase of this differential contributed to the significant dip in remittances as well. And this is the issue. Therefore, the governor's carrot and stick approach, as he went on the record, never, it only further exacerbated the situation. The principle that markets cannot be outsmarted should be understood. Honorable presiding member, solution is to increase. Uh, the rupee interest rate significantly higher. This will force exporters to convert their dollar holdings used as collateral to borrow rupees and then provide the exporters the market decided exchange rate to convert. convert. This will enable market forces to align interest rate and exchange rate at sustainable levels. And this is what you ought to do. What Sri Lanka is going through, many other countries have gone through at some point of time and have successfully come out of many such crises. The government it's high time that they stopped running after Honorable the devil member, and turned to the IMF up. for support. Since the IMF is a lender of last resort, resort, IMF is not a monster, as showcased in this house by many government members. IMF does not work in the interest of any government, political party or NGO, like, like they have been talking in this house. IMF will fo focus on what is best for the people of Sri Lanka and will ensure that the people of Sri Lanka benefit in a sustainable manner. Therefore, Honorable Presiding Member, I hope even at the late juncture, it is, sanity will prevail on the government side and expeditiously they will engage with the IMF and negotiate a package that would bring Sri Lanka out of this terrible, abysmal problem that we are faced with today. Thank you. Thank you. On, uh, on